Who's actually in charge of the um, flight this evening? Hi Alice, we can hear you. And I'm not there yet. On the right side of Volanta, have you ticked the Volanta um, checkbox on, you know, the, the control tower icon? Evening. Wow. I'm sure he'll wander in presently. <laughs> Evening. What a weather. Do we have uh, live weather? Uh, no, I'm just going with a few clouds because it's atrocious. The weather is awful. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Oh, blimey, yeah. Yeah, good luck if you stick in with that. Good evening, people. Good evening. Good evening, Dope. Good evening. Good evening. Voice check, please. Loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I hope you and your wife are feeling much better. We're improving, I'll put it that way. At least I'm uh, upright and vertical today, so we'll, we'll see how I do on the flying part. I was not able to function yesterday, so that's why I, I canceled our uh, Saturday flight. Yeah, actually, I was glad to see it was cancelled because I couldn't make it. I was on a road trip, but uh, I'm sad it got cancelled because you were sick, but uh, glad uh, I didn't miss it. Yeah, we'll pick up in two weeks. So I was just going to chime in quickly. Do we have a uh, designated uh, time for us to sit or just kind of as we please? Uh, I think Peter said midday. Yeah, copy. Thank you.
Looking forward to this flight today. A very good friend of ours, my wife and I, who now lives in Melbourne, um, originally came from that city. I don't know how you pronounce it. Forgive me. Uh, Ljubljana, is it? Ljubljana, or whatever. Oops. I don't know how they pronounce it. Ljubljana. Ljubljana. Yeah, that's where she came from. Lovely lady. She was one of those, and he was one of the others, and they had to get out, I'll say no more. So they came to NZ, but then subsequently moved over to Melbourne for work. So, um, yeah, Bernarda's a lovely lady. She really is. So's her husband. Neat guy. I'm a bit late because I had to restart the flights and froze when I was trying to load the flight plan. But fashionably later, so. <laughs> oh, I think we can do without live weather. It's still cloud speeder, will do. Oh, well, I've just, I've just come into uh, the uh, airfield and can't see anything. Uh, it's uh, oh, it's just looking a bit better now, but it's a lot of rain. There's a heap of us here tonight, so I think I'll get in the air and do a couple of circuits. Uh, are you sticking with live weather or are you... Uh, <laughs> uh, Going with a few clouds, Peter. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Oh, I see transmitters are up and working, so I take it the airline is uh, up and running. Jonathan. It shouldn't be. Oh no, I'm only showing the uh, standard, uh, uh, the sim aircraft, not the real aircraft. It's funny you say that, it's come back on, so the the host has taken the lock off. So transmitter may actually be working. You're a victim of your own success. It's a case of definitely flying with the nameplates on. Yeah, I'm still only showing my yellow aircraft. I can't see a red aircraft in there yet. What I must say, I'm looking forward to this one, Peter. It's a new location for me, so... Uh appreciate setting this one up. Well, I just think this is a lovely little uh, airfield. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Sadly, it's uh, all new to me, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. This is the one we landed at like, a, few, a few months back. Yes, we did. Um, I've come back, I've, actually, I've been here twice. Get off that one. 
Yeah. Not the easiest one to get on to either. Jonathan, you in the DC6? I am. I'm an idiot, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just watching the live. I'm having to take off from a nearby airfield because there's no way I'll get off that runway there. Yeah, I see I nearly jumped in the DC3 and I thought I'd have some issues, so I uh, set up for the uh, 208. Oh yeah, there's um, airfields I won't be landing at tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might struggle. <laughs> Just don't crash the taxi, nobody will know. Yeah, that's what slew mode's for. <laughs> Wheels up landing should stop you soon enough. Mike was uh, quite quiet there, Double Dog. Uh, you might just want to uh, do it. Oh. Thank you. I said, uh, what's the rotate speed on that DC? Way back in the early days, I went all the way from NZ to Singapore on a DC 6. Not in one hop, I might say. It was three. Auckland, Brisbane, Brisbane, Darwin, Darwin, Singapore. That must have been quite the journey. No, uh, right, it's, uh, it's 8 o'clock, so it's time to be off. Um, uh, quick word on tonight's flight. It's uh, in Slovenia, we're taking off from, then we go into Croatia, then we go back into Slovenia, and then we go back into Croatia. Um, also, if this is your first flight uh, with the virtual flight, uh, Sunday night group flight, uh, we have very few rules. Uh, one is no bad language, uh, stay away from religion, bad jokes are acceptable but not rude jokes, uh, it's just generally behave yourself. Oh, and have fun. We always do, Peter.
Oops, somebody hit the trees. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> uh, you can do this. Uh, uh, the first route is um, 51 miles along. Um, basically, you can do what you can either get fly direct up and over the land, or you can follow the valleys, or basically follow the river, actually. Um, the course is 114. Of course, 114 cover. I recommend on that river route, it's quite gorgeous. Yes, although my name is on this, Joe and I uh, sorted this out a while ago. Yeah, you did the work, I just was the tag along. Ah, but you're the one who suggested that we do this for a Sunday night flight. What you flying today, Joe? I am in the Black Wing today. Watch out for power line. How are you and your good lady doing, Joe? Not very well yesterday, a little bit more improved today. She's actually much better than she was two weeks ago, so thanks for asking. I was not a functional human being yesterday, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I was sad to see you uh, fall short on that flight there, uh, Joe, but uh, yeah, I must say one fantastic route you've had uh, laid out there, and I do appreciate you uh, sending the rest of the uh, plan over to me as well. It's uh, mostly appreciated. My pleasure. Caravan at the end of the run. Oh no, you're going, okay. Anybody here want to see the uh, solar eclipse? Has it happened or is it happening? It's April 8th. Oh, well, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I've been using the uh, simulator to uh, scout locations. Uh, see about, uh, ideally, I want to be up on a hill and uh, overlook a valley. And I did manage to find the uh, airstrip where the uh, approach to it is, uh, overlooks a, t a small town. I don't want to call the uh, airport manager to see if uh, they're going to allow anybody on the uh, day of the solar eclipse out on the airstrip. Oh, fantastic. Well, uh, I hope it all pans out. Same here. <clears throat> if you're following the river, there's a lot of pylons and wires if you've got them uh, modelled. <laughs> Six. Uh, 
I have to keep reminding myself that I can't just climb out of a valley easily. <laughs> <laughs> or slow down in a hurry. Where did you take off from, Jonathan? Um, an airfield that I can't pronounce, about 10 miles or 20 miles to the northwest of where we started. <laughs> okay. Had far too many um, consonants in the name. I think it's Letalisi, I'm not sure though. Jonathan, what do you think of the DC-6? It's brilliant, it always has been. It's just, it's taken me a long time to learn it. And I've been working on it quietly this weekend, well, before all the mayhem happened. Because um, I've, I've rewritten the procedure guide that I wrote, basically to avoid the pitchfork-toting specialists who maybe flew the real thing for 30 or 40 years and were out for my blood for missing that I had the manifold pressure wrong or the BMEP was through the roof or <laughs> it's um it's a handful to fly properly. Yeah, I'm tempted to pick it up. I'm anticipating the same level of pitch workery when I publish my DC three gun. <laughs> oh I saw Joe that the tiger is uh, finally coming out. Um, is that is oh, that the 105 meter? I can't remember. I'd have to look on YouTube to check the number. Uh, we were talking about uh, the reason I was saying about it was it's the jet that the uh, astronauts used as their personal uh, transport between uh, airfields. Oh yeah, I remember us talking about that one. Yeah. Is that the Talon? It's a T38, wasn't it? Yeah, the twin seat one's a Talon, I think. The Tiger, sh is it Tiger Shark, the single engine one? Hold on a minute. Yeah, the T-38 was a demilitarized version of the Tiger, the F-5E. Had a different shaped nose slightly, but that's because it didn't have a radar. Yes, yeah. Yeah, the Air Force is still using the T-38s. Yep slowly being replaced by that new thing that Boeing have made, isn't it? I believe so. They, I see them flying over here in northwest Alabama all the time, coming from Columbus Air Force Base. The new trainer got to move for ejection seat and flight system problems. We had astronauts come in and out of Greensboro. There was a uh, manufacturing facility for the shuttle program uh, in a little town called Burlington, about 30 miles east of Greensboro. And they would fly in and pop over to the manufacturing facility. I believe they uh, converted the front seat of one of them to have the controls of the shuttle. Uh, and they altered uh, some kind of configuration to make it uh, handle a bit like the shuttle so that they could practice uh, landings for real life rather than on a simulator. That was a Crusader. Oh no, yeah, there was a Learjet they did that with. They also did it with a Crusader as well, I think. They were testing the fly by wire, weren't they? Yes, yeah, so it's an article. I read it long ago, so I may have got that all wrong. No, I think you're right. They basically turned a Learjet into a an anvil. <laughs> I 
I think it was the second or third landing of the shuttle, they had a huge problem with oscillation, didn't they, on landing. He nearly crashed it. Yeah, it's not the aircraft to crash. Yeah, you don't get to go around in the shuttle, do you? Good evening. Yes, just cheers, evening, please. Steve. Evening, all. Oh, I might actually stay the stay the course this week if the internet stays up. Uh, evening, Dave. Evening, Jordan. Evening, everybody. Evening. Don't talk to me about the internet. <laughs> evening, Steve. That uh, Neil. Oh. Mate, you're right. You're not good. You can't see your name up there, you know, you're wrong. No, you can hear Okay. Neil! How was the craft, Neil? For the dogs. Disgusting. You shouldn't let dogs in at all. Yes, it was barking. Ah, it was excellent, actually. Came away with not spending too much money. Spending... What? I don't, it's just difficult to see what you could buy. Ah, oh, mate, it is. We came back with a big bag of chicken's feet. Of course, yeah, I mean, uh, silly of me not to guess. Yeah, and, and fish sticks as well, you yeah. know. Well, that would have been my next guess, yeah. <laughs> I had the pleasure of holding that cup, the winner's cup. What did you, what would you, third or second or first? No, I was about 15, 16 year old, and a friend at Gloucester won it. You know, best of breeds. Oh. I was going to say, your coat, it was your coat not glossy enough, man. I've been to Cross with one of our new fizz, but uh, that was all. Uh, we went out there to see. Um, I'm a member of the Retriever Society, and uh, they've got a team that sort of does a, a show with retrievers. It's very good. Couple of pylons, man. Good on that, Max says runway 04, exact grab, or whatever you call it. Then we have ILS at uh, 109.5. My dog plays a trumpet on the uh, London Underground. Went from barking to tooting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. I just tripped out over a wire going across this river. <sighs> My dog's got no nose. Does he smell? He doesn't. But we're 17 minutes in and we haven't had any bad jokes yet, so I thought I'd kick it off.
fighting a continual battle with his DC-6 of keeping the carburettors warm enough. If it wants to go cruise speed, which is like 230 all the time. <laughs> Those old birds, that's why they had to have flight engineers, uh, Jonathan. Yep, and that's why I'm darting around the cockpit like a mad thing, watching gauges and looking at dials and worrying. <laughs> Sounds like way too much work. Well, this is the thing in the simulator, isn't it? I mean, there is a, there is a co-pilot in the DC-6, an automated flight engineer that will get on with most of the jobs for you, but I, I'm doing it myself just for a bit of fun. Oh, that's interesting. He's not perfect though, he does make mistakes. <laughs> so you have to keep an eye on what he's done. <laughs> Could have someone to put the blame on. Five engineers do everything right there. Heating. In case anyone wants to do it, there is uh, an ILS for this first airport. Uh, it's 109.5. 109.5. Copy. Yep, copy. Someone say, uh, what is it for? Yeah, I think it is a 109.5 uh, is, yeah, runway 04. Oh, good. Does the DC-6 got ILS in it, Jonathan? Yes. The biggest problem with the DC-6 is slowing it down. You have to make plans kind of 20 miles out. I've never flown it myself, but she uh, she looks like a big old uh, big old girl. That's uh, yeah, it would take a bit of work to get her slowed down. A uh, super constellation wouldn't be much different, would it? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're, yeah, as bad as each other. <laughs> they certainly did their job in the day, though, didn't they?
when was the uh, DC six manufactured? Uh, do you know? I know the the DC three was was it thirty five? Was it nineteen thirty five? I think a DC six is post war. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, right, copy. Yeah, I was gonna guess forty nine or fifty. Yeah, great aircraft for the time, I must admit. Well, as much as I love that DC-3, I think I'm going to have to pick up the 6 and keep my eye on that flight engineer. If you um, have all the realism turned on, you just end up with post-traumatic stress disorder watching the engine gauges. <laughs> <laughs> it well, simulates... <laughs> It's probably got the best engine simulation of any aircraft in the simulator. You can do things like, um, it's got superchargers, it's got um, cooling of all sorts of things. It's also, you can inject water into the engine, you know, to get extra thrust or extra power, I should say. And I guess the documentation for it is scant from the uh, publisher. No. No, it's got about a four or five hundred page book with it. Oh, wow. That's a change. Is that PMDG? Yes. Well, you sold me. My wallet thanks you. Yeah, it also it simulates good. icing of inside the cylinders and it's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Also, carburetor, sorry, not um, but yeah. Sounds like too much like hard work, Jonathan. Well, if you know how combustion engines work properly, which I don't really with aviation ones, um, it, it's probably all natural to you because it's got like BMEP gauges and all sorts of things. Whatever that is, I was an electrician, not an engine fitter. <laughs> It's brake, manifold, something, pressure, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, if you don't understand it, the rest of the world don't really stand a chance, fine charge at all. Though. But you do get the good book with it, and it's, yeah, it does all make, it's, it's quite a good read. I think that sounds really nerdy, doesn't it? <laughs> does it have Pratt & Whitney engines? I think so. Oh, good. They sure did. I think they were 14 cylinder twin radials, weren't they? Yeah, starting uh, room is quite the ordeal. Power. Lovely detailed scenery around here. Probably. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. For the houses and the, the, even the, the high rises. Yeah, it's really just well done. This is where all the scrapping went on, wasn't it? Isn't it in this oh. area? Okay, mid 90s, yeah, I know. And Zagreb, and we need Zagreb. Yep, that's where we're coming into now, isn't it? There's the airfield. Picked up the localizer, so he's going to approach. Trigger guards for the rifles. Smashing them all up on rocks. Just get that thing just through the hole from the bottom. I don't have to turn the name tags off, fellas. I'm sorry, I can't see the runway. I don't know if that AI injected, but I've got a whole row of Croatian looking ATRs down there, all neatly parked. Going over the outer market.
David and Peter, I'm on final right behind you. I think I've got to load up enough not to get in your way. Yeah, I'm just on base for uh, zero four while talking behind you, Jeff. changed. No, I haven't changed it in the sim. Okay, you should. bring myself to do it, I love Snoopy too much. Next stop is coffee, isn't it? Uh, that's correct. Thank you, Peter. I'll go ahead and get the infomercial out of the way for next Sunday. We will be flying from Naples to Key West. And we'll be stopping at the Ocean Reef Club for beverages along the way. I'll be a tie with you. You bang. Margarita! Bring your own parrot. What's the address? Joe. What's the dress code, Joe? Oh, well, I think you have to wear a, a Hawaiian shirt there, Ellis. Oh, uh, it's. Oh, okay. And Bermuda. I'll put clothes on. Parrothead. Grass skirt. Flip flops. That's a draw hat. Peter, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, no, Ellis, uh, said what I said, so I said, okay. Just step on the pop top.
anybody who hasn't seen the DC6, something else to say about it is it has um, consumable modelling. So all, all the fluids in the engines is modelled, all the usage of them. So you can run out of lots of things. <laughs> oh wow, incredible. Who, um, who's the, uh, who made the DC6, or at least for the sim anyway, sorry? I've it's PMDG. Oh, fantastic, okay, yeah. That explains why it's so uh, high fidelity then. Oh, fantastic. The other thing that's quite good fun, when you're on the ground with the engines that tick over, at certain RPMs, the, all the gauges inside, the entire fascia starts to rattle and shake so badly that you can't read the gauges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Incredible. The usual way to fix that is either to just raise the RPM slightly or drop it slightly to stop the oscillation happening. Have you got one of those butt kickers, John? No. I want one. I can recommend the HF8 seat pad. Very good. Yeah, I'll second that. Absolutely fantastic. Just through and through. Last couple of days flying that uh, Chinook, the new Chinook from Miltec. Uh, the noise, the low frequency noise, and this. It's, it's, it's probably the best aircraft I've experienced. Which one is that? Uh, the new CH 47, the Chinook. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the sounds in it are excellent. They've got the low level warmth of the rotors from inside, and the seat seems to match the vibrations quite well of the engine and it just it, you feel it. it it's just fantastic it's the best feeling of, of any aircraft so far i felt is, uh, is that i just bought the osprey a couple of weeks ago it's pretty cool very nice yeah miltech certainly know their stuff i say the schnook is, is good i'll second that I think they rushed it a little bit, this uh, Chinook. About 50% of whatever's in there doesn't work. But I suppose it's worth getting it out. And I think I'd prefer it now than wait three or four months. Yeah, yeah, I, so I got it and it, it's, it's really, I mean, you know, with the low pickups as well and everything. Oh, yeah, and, that's and fine, isn't it? Yeah. I think I've only done it correct one, so it just keeps breaking my load all the time. Yeah, if you overspeed it or over it, it breaks, so. <laughs> Yeah, I even had um, uh, a grab full of water and I managed to lose that as well. <laughs> I've, I've dropped so many Humvees and boats. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually a joy to fly. It's actually a little easy to fly, I think, but I'm sure they'll add some more realism to that. Yeah, they say the real ones is, is much more stable than a normal helicopter, so it's, it's, I guess it's a little bit more realistic, maybe. Yeah, hovering is very difficult to keep it dead still, but flying it's quite nice. Yeah, I think they said after SU-15 or the next one is, it'll have the tandem rotor modelling. Keep up in my level VR five, VR three. There's a video somewhere on YouTube which uh, shows a Chinook uh, literally dipping its tail with its uh, back end down, dipping its tail in the water, and uh, presumably some Marines uh, uh, speeding a, a rubber uh, dinghy thing. Uh, up out from the outside on the water into the uh, body. Apparently they yeah. can't do they can't do that now because of the new ones and they're so electronic. They can't put them in the water. That's that's no longer uh, a thing they do. They used to do with the old models, but not the new ones. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I was watching a video on it uh, the other day, and I was explaining yeah because of all the electronics in the bottom of the uh, the Chinook now. Yeah, they can't. Uh, it was like too costly, wasn't it, for them to strip it down and clean everything out again? So yeah, that, uh, that maneuver now has been uh, yeah, redundant from the uh, military. That's what they use the Seahawk CH53.
bank boat is over 20 uh, I'll stop this side. So like weather is now very good if anybody's not using it. It's a perfect flight away. It's very nice. Okay, I just swapped over myself. So you're going to do circuits at the next airfield, Jonathan, while we all stop for a coffee? I might do a touch and go, just for a bit of comedy. <laughs> we won't be watching you, honestly. A new flat field, Supermanding. Good point, actually. I could have a scout around and see if there's a big flat field nearby. Well, that was bizarre. I uh, changed me uh, my weather to live, and then uh, I went from 160 knots to 180 like, in a matter of seconds, and just uh, yeah, destroyed me airframe. So I'm respawning back in. Yeah, we've well, got a five knot headwind, so nothing too extreme. What time are you running? Because I just had a quick switch over to live weather and uh, I was in full of mist. Uh, yes, I'm here, Peter. Uh, 12.47 I'm on and uh, yeah, it's very misty. Yeah, I'm about halfway to the next airfield. It's sort of just getting misty. I'm surrounded by rain showers. Uh, runway 22, uh, according to Little Map Map. Roger, uh, oh, Peter, yeah. Uh, if you've downloaded the uh, Flight TO uh, add on, uh, you should see a bit more, otherwise, it's literally uh, just a field. I've got 31 knots headwind on the way in. I'm at a few thousand feet. Yeah, I'm down at 1500 and I've only got a 7 knot wind. I've just turned off the gyro pilot in the DC-6. It sounds like a dinner bell at a school in the 1940s. <laughs> it's landed. The grass is quite short. <laughs> Living not dead when on the ground. Are you flying tonight, Peter? No, 208. Yeah. Yep, yeah, 208 uh, with the barrier livery. I was going to say, I actually saw that livery when we started, and I thought, oh, that's the first time I've seen that because uh, I'm in the same, so I don't know whether you saw me, but. I actually saw you in the right livery, how's that? Yeah, I did too. I saw you in the right livery as well. For once, it, uh, it sort of all behaved itself. I think in the next update I was reading the other day, they're going to do a... a, a it's going to be a big um, job done on, um, um, you know, model matching. So we'll see what happens. I think it's about 26th of the month, isn't it? The next update. Yeah, I think so. You can get the beta now. I think they've got to insist that uh, the uh, aircraft manufacturers for the sim follow the proper coding and just don't invent their own codes. Very heavy showers about, aren't there?
I did. It was a bit dangerous, but I got down. You've got a rain clouded and fogged out. Yeah, there's rain right over the airfield. <laughs> yeah, I've got zero visibility. Oh crap. Very low as well. Charlie got that many so far. It's got to go. Come and park alongside you, Peter, so we do the advertising game. Oh, well, it's a small airline. Trouble is, I think you, you told the airline to see it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm going up by the book. She just what went over. You went over.
go into the tower. I'm not sure if it's the add-on scenery, but uh, the air traffic controller is playing um, uh, flight sim. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. going to get a run up from the field just across the way. <laughs> Luckily there's an extra bit of field over here. And I'm going to get out of the way. Blimey, stepped away for two minutes and it's it's incredibly foggy here. Yeah, I've decided to uh, just opt on the uh, clear skies for the uh, flight. So the scenery is that lovely, it's a shame not to see it. We have a DC-6 on run, run down the runway. Woo! Did he just yell, hold my beer? Very nice. Looks like the rain's setting in again. Yeah, I've whipped out back to uh, easy weather. I think we all have. person was very quiet to me. Yeah, same here, very quiet comms there. But...
Where are you flying, Tunesy? Um. Uh, oh no, Corsair. Ah, uh, very nice. Just don't crush it. Yeah, sort of, sort of streamlining it, battling it down. At least it's comfortable. Now. Got the comfort sorted out. That costs uh, that costs a hundred quid to get that sorted. And now it's just deciding whether it's better just to use the air lit, do it wirelessly via desktop or with the cable. I'm trying the cable tonight and. It likes to, likes to put on the, the reprojection mode automatically every now and again. For some reason, just fires it up. Mm, a little bit of lag. You wouldn't have thought there would be much of that with the cable. It seems to be a better connection and less lag when it's wireless. Other than that, it's not so bad. Sales tactic work, Steve. We ended up getting the 310. Oh, you did, yeah. Yeah, I got it earlier this afternoon, so I'm still trying to learn it. But yeah, it's good fun. Oh, it seems to be a reliable old chappy. I did see though that marketplace got a sale on for Caronado as well. Which one? Oh, All of it. Oh, grab the black square 208. It's a great plane. I think, what are you considering that, Neil? Uh, yeah. But, uh, I've got the 310, but as I say, Coronado have got a sale on all their products in Marketplace. I think it's about 30% off. I'll have a look. I don't think there's going to be one, but it's always worth the most. The 182RG is very, very good. Oh, yeah, I mean... Even if I like that too, yeah. Jonathan. They're my two go-to planes these days. The 208 Black Square and the um, and the 182 uh, G. Are we all back? I'm back. Oh, I think Some of us are already on the way, I think, Jonathan. So it looks like Peter's airborne. Yeah, I've, well, I looked around uh, and saw that everybody was virtually in the air, so I was about time to hit the air waves. Yeah, copy that bit.
funny. You find yourself playing all sorts of silly games with the engines in the DC-6 just to keep them hot enough. So like reducing the RPM to make more torque required, more power, just to warm the engines up. What speed are you actually doing, Jonathan? Well, it doesn't seem to matter what you do. It, it, I, oh, it seems to settle down at around about 200 to 230. And slowing, it doesn't like going slow for very long. It starts to harm the engines. Yeah, those planes really have a very narrow flight envelope. Yeah, and it's it's interesting that I read the I've, I've written it up in my my own guide now, but it's got specific um, manifold pressures and RPMs you're looking for on climb and descent and things like that to make sure you don't smash the engines up because doing so would have been really dangerous <laughs> one of the, the um, Atlantic Ocean <laughs> yeah one of the real pilots that um, gave me some tips about flying it that cropped up in the YouTube comments was saying that on this particular type of engine that these have got you had to have positive thrust so so the engine is pulling the whole time because if the engine found itself pushing against the air, it would wreck the engine. Things you don't want to know as a passenger. So in other words, you can't descend on idle, you have to do a parrot descent. So you have to plan ahead. What's the range of... Sorry there, mate, uh, continue. Very heavy wind now. You're oh, still very uh, quiet there, dude, for me at least. The DC-6 can almost do a transatlantic flight. I think with the right weather conditions it can just about scrape it. Right, that's next week's flight then. <laughs> There's a guy that used to fly with us, I think some of you might know him from other groups, a German guy called Horace. He had a bit of a mania for trying to do the transatlantic trip in the DC-6. <laughs> well, what did they used to use, or what did they do? Did they have... There's not many halfway stops, is there, across the Atlantic? Well, it, it didn't do that route. You can do it if you go via Iceland. So I imagine they did that and went to Keflavik or somewhere. Greenland, Iceland. Yeah, going to Goose Bay or somewhere like that. That's probably how those airfields got built originally. Although they were probably for the B-29s and B-17s doing the crossing during the war, weren't they? Well, they were built in the Iceland and Newfoundland. Because some Lancasters went the other way, didn't they? So Canada had quite a lot of Lancasters at one point. They had quite a terminal. I think it's Goose Bay that had quite a terminal that the USA built uh, that was used uh, after the war for the airlines. Yeah, you know, T3 approach on this one, Peter? Yes, that's what little Alpha map says. Oh, cap it. Grass runway again. Uh, the best kind of runways, if you ask me, anyway.
Your DC six is an A three twenty to me, Jonathan. <laughs> You're right in front of me. runway was nicely mowed anyway. Must have heard it's it just coming. about to be nicely ploughed in a second. <laughs> well, Jonathan did a nice landing. I was right behind him. He didn't bounce, so 10 out of 10, Jonathan.
that room over there's one of the ones in Slovenia, or was it again? Unless I've got my uh, countries the wrong way around. You got it the wrong way around, John, uh, Peter. Well, You're I about on this on this next leg. We actually cross from one to the other, don't we? Don't we go from Slovenia into Croatia for this? Here in little we do this time, yeah. I know Bernarda came from Libjuana, that's what it was, and she was from Slovenia. Because there's three of them, isn't there? There's Slovenia, Croatia, and Bosnia. Yeah, where all the troubles were. I think it was Bosnia, Croatia, and Herzegovina, wasn't it? Is it one Bosnia Herzegovina now? Yes. Yes, it is. They were all once Yugoslavia. It's Yugoslavia, yeah. Yes, that's true. Bless you. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> In the early days, a lot of them came down to NZ and uh, planted grapes out west of Auckland. Got us all into trouble, they did the itches out there. Yugoslavia wine was supposed to be really good. We thought it was too. This is maybe Yugoslavia if they plant it down there, or is it? Well, I think we need brains in on this one, Steve. Sorry? So we need to get brains in on this one. Oh, the wine, man, yeah. Well, yeah, well. In between, yeah. Well, that's the thing is, <laughs> he takes too much of his subject. You know, <laughs> you got to get him before he starts drinking it to explain it. Mr. Blue Nub. <laughs> Next airfield, little nav map is saying uh, 07 uh, with a two knot headwind, and four knot crush wind. Yeah, and at elevation and the wind direction is 261 at 4 knots, so 07 it is, Peter. One of the good things about the DC-6 that I've learned is once you're climbing up into the higher altitudes where you become um, air pressure limited for the engines, that's when the superchargers come in. So I have my microphone a little wet way. Yeah, it's quite interesting. The, the the array of devices this DC6 has to get more power and more speed. So it must be uh, quite the unfall, really, when you uh, now consider all the work you got to do in there. It is. It just becomes procedures though, so you know, you just follow the, the instructions. If you're in a climb, you watch the manifold pressure dropping, you kick the superchargers in. Then if you want to go even faster, you put some water in if you're heavy. Get even more power out of the engines. 
And the next oh, wow. minute the engine goes bang, does it, Jonathan? It, well, yeah, because that's why you've got these BMEP gauges. They're kind of the over, overall pressure happening inside the engine. If anything goes wrong, you blame the co-pilot. <laughs> or the flight engineer. Yeah, you could always engineer. could always use him. You can listen to him talking as he's doing things. Yeah, when you said about the uh, water there, John, what, you, so you can actually introduce water to cool it down, is it? Is that what you're saying? No, it atomizes it into the engine. Oh, so, right. Yeah, so, Our boom! <laughs> oh, practice the water injection, yeah. Like yes, increase the density, yeah. You know. Water onto a frying pan, you know? Yeah. yeah. Bang. <laughs> of course, yeah. you do it too much and the engine goes bang. It expands, doesn't it? So, yeah. You got enough for a cup of tea. So, yeah, if you turn all the realism on in the DC6, you can kill the engines in about five seconds flat. <laughs> yeah, too much work for me. <laughs> So I'd, li I'd like to be that uh, competent uh, with flying eventually, but uh, yeah, I'm far from it at the moment. If you wanted that sort of stress, you'd play DCS. Oh, I'd love to, yeah. actually. I've, uh, I've followed shot DCS. At. <laughs> yeah, I've followed that quite closely. I find it absolutely fascinating. Uh, yeah, good for a free title, but uh, quite pricey for the uh, airplanes, uh, as far as I understand. The systems modelling in DCS is second to none, though. You won't be buying one every month, though, will you? You'll be spending six, uh, six to eight weeks learning it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, it's quite a lot to come. Have they um, introduced the Typhoon yet? Because uh, that was one that was... No. Oh, unfortunate. Oh, yeah, it's one of my uh, one of my favourites. Uh, yeah, I think the Phantom is the next one that's going to get released. Oh, wow. OK, yeah. Yeah, because it's getting a release on here as well, isn't it, by um, Fox Teco. Uh, no, Heat Blur. Heat Blur and Fox Teco, yeah. Shoot, that should be good, because their F-14 is absolutely outstanding. Is that another Phantom, Steve? Yeah, there's a, a, a Heat Blur version coming out soon. Oh, India Fox good. Teco and Heat Blur, it should be absolutely awesome. The, um, the no, I was just going to ask, is the uh, Phantom, uh, does that use the Meteor Missile, does it? Uh, th does that use the what? The Meteor Missile. Um, it was like one that was de developed during the Cold War. It has like a, a 50 mile standoff range. Uh, it's one of the British made uh, missiles. I think that used, no, I think it used the what's the name strike. Um, I can't the name of it now. Oh, those of you that have maybe only tried the free version of DCS, for free you can download the beta. And the beta is unlocked. You can then download third party open source aircraft to put into it. And there are some brilliant ones. So you're better off actually installing the beta of DCS, not the commercial version. Right, copy. As far as I understand, isn't there a few air aircraft in there that, uh, like, every six months you can do like a two-week trial? With you the, can, uh, yeah. You can download anything in DCS for a couple of weeks uh, every six months. Yeah, but as soon as I uh, get a computer, that would be something I'd, uh, yeah, I'd love to dive into. Um, like I said, it's something I've followed quite uh, closely, and you got like the, um, they've got the 24/7 uh, servers now, where it's a uh, constantly ongoing war, and it's like an effort to. Uh, yeah, control the airspace and capture the ground. It seems, yeah, if you're into that sort of aviation, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's remarkable what they've managed to do. Well, I'm in a poor armchair sightseeing. Weather is <laughs> absolutely appalling, it is, Grub Rico. Or Grub Nico. Call it what you like. Look. All crumbs, yes. Yeah, Grubniko Polji. Yeah. I butchered that one. Which <laughs> uh, 07. 
Oh, seven, copy. We're pretty much uh, flying straight uh, for a downwind, aren't we? So uh, yeah, I'll break off to the right a little bit. Any, um, anybody know the name of this uh, lake? I'm presuming it's a lake, it's uh, Mahusi. This is actually a, uh, an inlet from the ocean, isn't it? It's not a uh, lake. It's at the top, top of the Adriatic, isn't it? Yes. Is it yeah. the, map, yeah. the map it says uh, right here, Cairo, Golf. Rajika Golf. Okay, thank you, uh, David. And it's part of the Adriatic. Absolutely uh, stunning, I know that much. Yeah, this whole scenery has been amazing. Some uh, descent down isn't it, the mountains. I like this flying. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, I crashed it though. I can say to St. Heavens it was a long runway and it was only a touch and go. Yeah, I came in at about 350 knots. And me too. So you can look like. Bye, I love you.
<laughs> I, th I think that's the end of the Corsair, isn't it? Once you crash it, you can't restart it. Yeah, hey, uh, I think so. Um, I'm not sure. It's upside down, so... <laughs> <laughs> might, not, might not work anyway. Have you bent your propeller? Uh, I'm not worried about the propeller. The propeller's straight and the rest of the aircraft is wrapped around the propeller. Alright, actually I'm caught I'm caught in pylon wires. I'm not and sure if it is that I'm not sure if it is that aircraft. There but in uh, the what's it iron, flying iron, whatever you call them, planes. If you click on the propeller, it could it mends it. I think it does, yeah, I can see it there, but I'm I'm actually caught up in um Oh now then, okay. Yeah, it all says build bit, so we should do that. Yeah, I think once it's dead it's dead. Will it not allow you to uh, just spawn in at uh, oh, 5,000 feet? And just really more stuff. Oh yeah, I can spawn in at something else. That's fine. Oh right, okay, okay. okay. Looks like you're on manoeuvres now, Steve. I'm looking for a nice tree to go behind. I'm just finding somewhere to dump it. But it won't be found. <laughs> I just, I run it like they run it off cars off the edge of cliffs in films, so into the lake. <laughs> Stolen. I'm trying to hide the evidence. There we go. Throw a few branches on top. The ILS for our final airfield is 108.5. Witches over there. He attempted to deviate. Just about to go under. Yeah, I just took the words out of my mouth. I was tempted myself to uh, <laughs> have a little fly under him, but uh, yeah, I'm on final.
try to go clear the runway. So who's getting the coffees in there? <laughs> So what were you flying tonight, Adam? I was in the uh, 208, uh, back in the old faithful. Ah, nice. That's a tr trusty bird, isn't it? No, she's wonderful. What was she doing? On the Bonanza, uh, the improvement of that, actually, on the uh, line Oh, fantastic. So, uh, yeah. is it? Yeah, it works, uh, it works really nice. It didn't work at the same update 12, but uh, now it does. And it also uh, implemented the new uh, NXI in the 2000. So it's, it's, uh, as far as I can see, everything works just fine. The only thing that is not in the NXI is that I, compared to some of the other uh, <coughs> aircraft, I can't see the other game. Uh, on the displays, so I have to use an external model. Right, hello, yeah. Well, I'm happy to read it. Uh, yeah, it's a, a good enhancement for you, so yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, and Peter, uh, thank you very much for uh, setting this one up. Uh, I love your scenery, a uh, beautiful location, and uh, yeah, thank you. Sorry, no problem. Thank you, Peter. Yes, thank you, Peter. Yep, thank you, Peter. I can only echo the same sentiments as you just heard. Oh, that's okay, but enough of it. I'll get a big head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was an amazing trip, uh, as usual, Peter. Really, really nice scenery. It's wonderful down here. Planning to move here now. Yeah, fantastic. Very nice trip. Uh, looks like everybody's on the deck, so um, yeah, thanks again, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody has yourself a uh, uh, good rest of your uh, night or evening. So uh, yeah, take care, uh, everyone, and uh, have a good one. <laughs> yep, cheers. Good night. Good night. Yep. Thanks again for the flight. Have a good night. Enjoy myself. Just have a quick look around this airfield. I think it looks quite well modelled. <laughs> Yeah, it looks really good. Take the drone. I mean, the, the terminal looks like the looks like a paddle yeah, steamer. Everybody. Or a hotel, the side of a ship with balconies.
I'll say good night, gentlemen. See you again soon. Hi, oh, Hugh. Good night. Yep, hey, James. Cheers. Good night. Good night. Two cracking bridges joining the island to the mainland. Yeah, you can't actually go in the terminal, but it's very well modelled inside the images when you look in there. It's really well done. We've even got an old, uh, looks like an old Yugoslav Air Force aircraft, it's like a sort of gate guardian uh, on the way into the airport. Yeah, I saw that one. Night, everyone. I shall catch some of you tomorrow. Oh, see you soon. Yeah, very nicely modeled here and the airport itself and the buildings. Say night night as well. Bye oh, yeah, everyone. Good night, yep, Dave. Good night. I've got two DC sixes here now. We have. Right, so I'm gonna end the live stream there.